Hello everyone. It is a great pleasure to participate in this conference and present my work, Practical Reasoning and Argumentation-Based Decision BDI Agent, a case study for participatory management of protected areas. I would like to introduce myself and the other authors of this paper. My name is Pedro Velmovitsky and I am a master degree candidate at PUC Rio in Brazil. Max Viana is a researcher at PUC Rio. Carlos Luciano is my master advisor and the director of the Software Engineering Laboratory at PUC Rio. Jean Pierre Briot is a researcher at LIP6 in France and a visiting professor at PUC Rio. I would like to begin by talking about the SimPark project. It is a research project designed as a serious game to explore computer support for participatory management of protected areas, more specifically Brazilian national parks. The idea is for players to explore different negotiation strategies by playing roles, such as environmentalist, tourist operator, population representative, among others. Each player will be a stakeholder with some kind of interest in the park. Each player will also have a goal about the level of conservation of the park area, such as extensive use of land or intangible use of land. The final decision about the level of conservation is made by the park manager. So the goal of the game is for players to negotiate among themselves uh, to reach a level of conservation that they want. The park manager then will take this opinion into account and make a decision about the final level of conservation for the park area. This screen shows an area of the park. Each area of the park has a different set of characteristics, such as a plantation, a road, a waterfall, maybe some community living there, among others. In this screen, the players select which type of level of conservation they want. The project explores the use of advanced computer techniques. One of them is the use of agents to, si to simulate players and the park manager. Another technique is the use of argumentation systems as a support for decision and for negotiation. This paper specifically uses argumentation to model the behavior of the park manager agent, and this is what we are going to talk about next. There are many ways to model the behavior of agents, such as the BDI model, which stands for Belief, Desire, Intention. This model addresses the idea that we can talk about computer programs as if they had some kind of mental state. Thus, when you talk about a BDI system, we are talking about programs with computational analogs, analogs of beliefs, desires, and intentions. Beliefs are information the agent has about the environment. This information, however, is not necessarily true. For instance, an agent may perceive the fact that it is raining. However, the rain may stop before the next reasoning cycle of the agent. In this case, his belief that it is raining is outdated. Desires are the possible state of affairs that the agent might like to accomplish. That does not mean, however, that the agent will act upon them. Intentions are the state of affairs that the agent has decided to act upon. It can be considered as a selected option between potential desires. The agent expressing this work was implemented using the JSON platform. JSON is a Java-based interpreter for AgentSpeak, providing a platform for the implementation and development of agents. AgentSpeak allows the customization of the agent's beliefs, desires, and intentions following logic sentences. For instance, declaring buy car means that the agent believes he bought a car. The agents have goals that express the wishes they want to accomplish. If you put an exclamation mark before buy car, that means that the agent has the goal of buying a car. Agent Speak provides a way to customize plans, representing courses of action to achieve goals. The overall syntax for a plan is triggering event, context, body. The triggering event is what triggers the plan to begin. For instance, the agent has having the desire and intention to buy the car. The context evaluates if the plan is applicable. For instance, if the agent wants to buy a car, he needs to have a certain amount of dollars in his bank account. The body is the actions that the agent will perform in order to accomplish the plan. In this case, if the agent wants to buy a car, this may require him to actually go to the car store and pay the seller of the car. There have been many theories which try to formalize the reasoning of autonomous agents based on mental attitudes, such as the BDI model. One of the main characteristics of this type of reasoning is the resolution of conflicts, since the goals and attitudes available to the agent may not always be compatible. In addition, the information that the agent has may not always be consistent, or it may be true at one moment, but incorrect on the next. This is shown at the example mentioned before about whether it's raining or not. The theory of argumentation is a promising approach to deal with such considerations. Argumentation is defined as a process in which an agent may adhere to an opinion depending on the strength and validity of the arguments in favor of this opinion. Furthermore, agents reserve the right to revisit their opinions in light of new information. 
This theory tries to capture the notion of everyday reasoning, where conclusions can be made from information that can be proven wrong, false, or maybe even out of date. The subject of interest, then, is an argument. As opposed to a proof, where we assume everything is right, an argument may be invalidated by other arguments. So, by comparing arguments, it's possible to resolve conflicts and inconsistencies in the agent's belief base. Formally, an argument is a pair, capital H, lowercase h, such that capital H is consistent, capital H is, uh, uh, implies in lowercase h, and capital H is minimal, that is, there is no subset of capital H which verifies 1 and 2. An attack relation between a pair of arguments is defined as follows. Suppose we have two arguments, 1 and 2, represented by a pair capital H1, lowercase h1, and capital H2, lowercase h2. If the conclusion of the first argument, lowercase h1, represents the negation of the conclusion of the second argument, lowercase h2, then we have an attack relation of the type refute. This is shown in the figure below, for instance, between arguments 4 and 2, where the conclusions are d and its negation. In this figure, we are supposing a general concept of force, which may represent the strength or validity of arguments. In this case, since the force of 4 is bigger than the force of 2, 4 would win the argument. Now, if we have some formula in the body of the second argument, which represents the negation of the conclusion of the first argument, we have an attack relation of the block type. This is shown in the figure between arguments 2 and 3, where d2 in the body of argument 2 is the negation of the conclusion of argument 3. In this case, since the force of 2 is bigger than the force of 3, 2 would win the argument. The architecture proposed in the SIMPAR game to deal with argumentation in software agents is as follows. Let us know D as the set of desires, B as the set of beliefs, and A as the set of actions. Each agent, then, will have the following rules in their respective belief base. Rules of desire are D of the form desires and beliefs implicating in a desire. In other words, if the agent has beliefs beta1 to beta m and desires phi1 to phi n, then desire phi is satisfied. These rules have intensity w. An example of such a rule in the context of sim park is if the agent believes the park area has a road, a tourism flow, and a beach, then he will have the desire of race tourism with weight 3. It is important to note that in the slides, the rules have been written using the syntax from agent speak mentioned in the slides before. The other types of rules the agent has are the decision rules RA of the form action implying a desire. In other words, if the agent takes the decision of performing action alpha, then desire phi is satisfied. These rules have utility u. An example of such a rule in the context of SimPark is, if the agent performs the action of selecting extensive views of the land, then the desire of race tourism will be satisfied, with utility 0 0.75. For an agent to decide which action to choose, he must compare the gain of each action. These gains are defined as intensity of the desire versus utility of the desire related to the action. Considering the examples above, the gain for the desire to raise tourism will be the intensity of the desire from the desire rules, in this case 3, times the utility of this desire related to the action from the decision rules, in this case 0 0.75. So, the gain of the action extensive use regarding the raise tourism desire is 2.25. It is also important to note that there are two more rules defining the sim park architecture for the agents representing players in the game and the park manager. However, since they are not relevant to the context of this paper, I will not mention them here. In the game, the responsible for making final decisions concerning the use of the land is the park manager. Therefore, the focus of this work and paper is on the park manager role and the way to automate it into an artificial agent. The park manager's BDI architecture can be modeled following the system outlined in the previous slides. For instance, suppose that the available actions are extensive use and intangible use of the land, and the agent has the following beliefs about the area. Road, forest, beach, waterfall, tourism flow, and forest fire. Then. The desire rules and decision rules were modeled as shown in the slide. For instance, the first desire rule says that if the agent believes the area has a road, a tourism flow, and a beach, then the agent will have the desire to raise tourism. 
The second desire rule says that if the agent believes the environment has a forest, then the agent will have a desire to protect this forest. Concerning the decision rules, the first rule says that if the extensive use action is available, then the, action will, then the agent will have the desire to raise tourism. In this stage of the work, there is no mechanism for the generation of rules. They were implemented manually to simulate the attack relations in the agent's belief base. In the examples of the next slide, I will restrain from using the agent speak syntax for the sake of explanation and brevity. Just to give you an example of how that would work, the decision rule extensive views race tourism could be represented in JSON as follows. Then, we could derive a plan for calculating the gain of the action extensive use with the following syntax. This particular plan checks whether the race tourism desire is in the agent's knowledge base with intensity A and calculates the gain of the action extensive use regarding the desired race tourism by multiplying this intensity with the utility D of the action. As I said in the next slides, I will try to not use the agent speak syntax in order to better explain the implementation of the agent in JSON. Now, let's go back to the knowledge base of our agent. Here, we have a refute attack relation between the green rules, because the conclusion of one of the rules, the desire to raise tourism, is the negation of the other rule. Here, we have a block attack relation between the red rules, because the conclusion of one of the rules, the desire to protect forest, is the negation of an atom in the body of the other rule. Now, let us assume the following intensities and utilities for each of the rules. For instance, the desire raised tourism in the desire rule will have intensity 3. The action extensive use related to this desire will have utility 0 0.75. There is no formal mechanism yet for the generation of these values. They were added manually for this example. The gain of the action extensive use is the intensity 3 times the utility 0 0.75, resulting in 2.25. The race tourism negation has intensity 2, but the desire to raise tourism has intensity 3. Assuming intensity equals force, the desire to raise tourism wins the argument and remains in the knowledge base. The same thing happens with the desire to protect forest. The intangible use action is related with the desire to protect forest and prevent fire. So, we are assuming the total gain is the sum between the gains of each action. The desire to protect forest has utility 1 and intensity 3, with gain 3. The desire to prevent fire has utility 0.5 and intensity 3, with gain 1.5. Therefore, the total gain of the intangible use action is 4.5, which is bigger than 2.25. So, the intangible use action is selected by the park manager. Now, suppose the negation of protect forest has intensity 4 instead of 2. In this case, the desire to protect forest is removed from the agent's knowledge base and the gain for the action intensible use is just 1.5 from the desire to prevent fire. Since 2.25 is bigger than 1.5, the agent selects the extensive use action. This example shows the flexibility of the BDI model that makes use of argumentation. It allows for the agent to deliberate and decide while eliminating conflicts between the bases. As future work, we want to be able to automate the management of attacks between arguments. We also want to be able to track the agent's reasoning to choose an argument over another to give feedback to the user. In that way, the user can understand why one decision was made and not another one. We also want to implement other player roles as agents. Also, implementing negotiation between real players and agent players using argumentation would be a really interesting step in our work. Lastly, we want to be able to use personality traces to define intensity and utility values. So thank you very much for listening to my session and please feel free to contact me or any of the authors in case you have any doubts about the paper. Also please feel free to read the paper to get more details about the subjects discussed here. Thank you again and goodbye.